right guys, welcome to Psych Explain. In this video, we're gonna talk about the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, even though in psychology there are lots of ways to describe data that you collect, these three measures are most commonly used. And you might be thinking, why is that? Why do we just talk about the mean, the median, and the mode together? It's because all three measures help explain where the data is clustering around, or more specifically, where the center or middle of the data is. For example, if we take a look at this bell curve right here, the mean, the median, and mode help explain what is happening right in the center, as opposed to, let's say, something like the standard deviation, we'll talk about that in another video, help explain what is happening away from the middle or away from the center. And this is why we call the mean, the median, and the mode measures of central tendency. They are all three measures to describe data, and they all have the tendency or likelihood to describe where the data is clustering around or where the center of the data is. So there's some nice background knowledge. Now, in this video, there are three things we're gonna discuss. The what, the how, and the why. What is the mean, the median, and the mode? How do we find the mean, the median, and the mode? And why would we use one particular measure of central tendency over another? So let's get started. So in order to find the mean, the median mode, we're gonna use this data set right here, the hours of sleep each day. And just imagine you kept track of the total hours you slept each night in a given week. For example, on Tuesday, you slept a total of seven hours. On Thursday, you slept a total of eight hours. And on Sunday, you slept a total of five hours. And you just want a better understanding of your sleep patterns. Well, guess what? The mean, the median mode can help you. So let's start with the mean, the what, the how, and the why. Let's start with the what. The mean is what we consider the average or the arithmetic average, all right? This is probably the most common measure of central tendency that we use. And by the way, you might not have used the word mean, but you've calculated it many times in your life. For example, if you rent an apartment or you own a house and you're trying to find out the average monthly cost of electricity or gas or cable, you have used the mean. Or if you follow sports and you want to know a baseball player's batting average or a basketball player's average points per game, you have not used the word mean, but you are calculating the mean. So there's some interesting information. Now, how do we calculate the mean? There's a two-step process. The first thing we do is we add up each individual data point, each one represents a data point, in our data set. So let's do that together. 8 plus 7 plus 9 plus 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5. Let's do that together. We have eight plus seven plus nine plus eight plus eight plus four plus five. All right, what does that equal? That's gonna equal 49. That becomes our sum. So that's step one. Add up each individual data point to get your sum. And then what do we do with our sum? We divide our sum by the total numbers in our data set. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divide by seven. So we take our sum, divide by the total number of data points in our data set, and the answer becomes our mean. 49 divided by seven is seven, and that becomes our mean. And just as a side reference, this is our symbol for the mean, okay? So our seven is the mean. Now, why would you use the mean over, let's say, the median and the mode? Well, if you look at our data points, because they are relatively the same, the mean is the best measure of central tendency to use. If you had an outlier, for example, an outlier is a score that is so far away from each individual data point, the mean would not be the best measure of central tendency to use. And we'll talk about outliers more when we get to median. So let's write it together. Why would we use the mean? When all the data points, all the data points are relatively relatively the same, okay? All right, so let's move on to our next measure of central tendency, the median. What is the median? The median represents our middle value or middle number, all right? In other words, if this dot is our median, we are gonna have 50% of our data points going in one direction and 50% of our data points going in the other direction. What's the middle? Our median. Now, how do we actually find our median? We put our numbers in our data set in numerical order, from least 
to most, from lowest to highest. So let's do that together. Our lowest would be, find it with me, four, then five, then seven. And look, we have a few eights, one, two, three. So we'll have eight, eight, eight. And then finally, our highest number would be nine. Okay, so we go four, five, seven, eight, 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 nine. Now, where is our median? Well, our median has to be in the middle where 50% is in one direction and 50% is in another direction. And through that logic, eight right here would be our median because I know we have three digits going in this direction and three digits going in that direction, 50% here and 50% there. So the median would be eight. Now, you'll notice there's an odd number, but how do you find the median if there are even numbers? Well, let's think about this together, okay? Let's imagine that our numbers are zero, one, two, three. Where's our median, right? There is no middle number. So what do we do? Well, the next best thing to do is we take the two middle numbers, and I know these are two middle because I have one digit here, one digit here, right? 50% here, 50% there. We add them together, right? One plus two equals three, and then we divide it by two because we have two digits, one, two. So we have three divided by two equals 1.5. And 1.5 becomes our median when we have an even number. So there's our median. Now, why would we use our median versus let's say the mean or the mode? We would use a median when we have outliers. Okay, we just talked about this before. When you have individual data points that are just so far away from the average data point, those are called outliers. For example, imagine every single night you slept 10 hours, 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 and on Sunday you slept zero hours. Well, zero would be an outlier because it's so far away than the other data points. So what do we do? Well, let's do an example together, okay? And we're gonna do a little error here to show you that we're moving up to here. What do we do with outliers? In other words, why wouldn't we use the mean? Let's do this together. Let's imagine we are looking for homes, okay? And you're moving to an area and you like it and your family likes it and you happen to pick a random sample of five homes. Here are the prices. 250,000, 300,000, 350,000, 400,000, and five million. And you're like, I'm just gonna calculate the mean to see if I can live there, okay? So how do we calculate the mean? Remember the two-step process. First, we add up each data point, 250,000 plus 300,000, plus 350,000, plus 400,000, plus 5 million, and I've already done this calculation before, okay? This is gonna equal $6.3 million, okay? Now, what do we do? We divide that, okay, divide that by the number of data points in our data set. One, two, three, four, five divided by five. And what does that equal? $1.26 million becomes our mean. And you remember our symbol right here? This becomes our mean, okay? And you're thinking, there's no way I can afford a house in this area because the average cost is $1.26 million. What happened? We have one data point that is so far away that's our outlier, that it skews the data. And that's why we don't use the mean when we have an outlier. Instead, the median is a better representation or measure of central tendency in our data. So what would be our median? Well, the numbers are already in order, 250, 300, 350, 400, 5 million. What is in the middle? 350,000 is our median, because we have two digits on the right and two digits on the left. And because of that, it seems like much more attractive of a neighborhood. 350,000 becomes our median. And by the way, if you look up on Zillow and other websites, home prices, rarely do they say the average or mean. They typically say the median home prices. Home prices, okay? They usually talk about the median and not the mean. And by the way, I see this in sports as well, right? You'll have an average baseball player who does, or basketball player who does something small, and then one game they have a really great game. Well, that skews the data, right? They're just an average player. 
So if you have a really good athlete and they have one really good game or one really bad game, I'd recommend to rely on the median, not the mean. All right, so we have our mean, our median, and finally, the mode. All right, so what is the mode? The mode is the most frequent number. The number, in other words, that repeats over and over and over again more than the other numbers in our data set. Now, there's really no calculation, right? In the mean, you add up the sum, you divide it by the total data points, and then in the median, you line them up. With the mode, you just look for the data point that occurs the most frequent. We have eight, seven, nine, eight, eight, four, five. So that's you guys. What's our mode? Which number occurs most frequent? The answer, one, two, three. The number eight occurs three times. So eight is our mode. And that's easy. Now, can you have no mode? Of course, there could be no mode. Can you have multiple modes? You can. If the number five repeated twice, then you have, or three times, you'd have eight and five would be our modes as well. So you can have no mode, you can have multiple modes, and you can have one mode. Now, why would we use the mode versus, let's say, the median and the mean? Well, with the mean and the median, you're always getting a number as your answer. But with the mode, you don't have to. You see, the mode is the only one of these three measures of central tendency that could give me information about what we call nominal data, okay, or categorical data, okay? For example, if I'm doing a study on gender and I'm studying, uh, you know, in my, in my study, there are more men than women, men is my mode because I have more men than women. So it doesn't have to be a number, it could be a category. Here's another example. I'm from Chicago and let's say I'm doing a poll and I wanna know, are there more Cubs fans or are there more White Sox fans in my poll? Okay, and I do my little study and I got, you know, 10 people saying they're Cubs fans and I have 80 people saying they're White Sox fans. What does this tell me? It tells me that my White Sox is my mode, right? It's not a number, it's just a category. Okay, so White Sox is my mode. And if you can't tell, yes, I'm a White Sox fan. That's why we have more fans than the Cubs. All right, so we have our mean, our median, and our mode. All right, guys, before you leave, I do have a practice problem for you, and here is our data set. Your responsibility is to try to find the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, I'm not going to give you the answer here, but if you scroll down in the description box, you'll find the answer. So try it home, see what you come up with, and compare it to the correct answers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.